Hey guys, it's Finn. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can make a network for learning the MNIST dataset, which is which is a dataset that contains around 60,000 60, digits. But before I'm doing that, I need to um, do some do some things that I forgot in the last video. For example, um, I in the new train method that we did, I forgot this line, and this this just makes sure that the input side of uh, input size of our set is equal to the input size of our network and same with the output size. Furthermore, I implemented two new methods which are pretty much the same. Um, it's called MSE. This stands for mean squared error and it just calculates how close the output and the target vector are together. So if the output um, vector is equal to our target vector, this uh, MSE will return zero. Um, the MSE of our train set calculates the mean squared error for each of our data sets and takes the average over them. Um, when I'm doing the training stuff in our train set, uh, in our uh, train method, um, for each batch, I'm going to print the mean squared error of our batch so we can keep track on how good our learning process is. Uh, this will be very useful uh, for later learning the endless data set. So, um, if I'm I'm, the first thing I have to do is I have to you what the MNIST data set is. So um, the MNIST data set is um, a set of like 60,000 digits, but we're only talking about digits from 0 to 9. And they're, I, they're like, I think, 6,000 uh, zeros and 6,000 ones and so on. Um, and these can be downloaded on this page. And um, I, I also got a download link in the description. And for example, this is a list that shows a lot of uh, new networks that try to learn the MNIST data set and um, they printed the error rate, so how many errors they did. And I did the learning with our network yesterday and I had an um, error rate of around se uh, 7 promille, so like 0.7%. And um, this, is, this is very good, like um, there are some networks that are below 0 0.7, um, but I think 0 0.7 for our purpose is really good. So. Um, for accessing the MNIST dataset, I downloaded like five new classes from the web, and there's also a download link in the description. And um, no, only four. This one I made this one myself. So the MNIST label file, the MNIST image loader, MNIST image file, and MNIST DB file. And um, they're just for accessing the MNIST um, files and extracting the images out of the um, out of the file. So the the fifth um, class, MNIST panel, is just uh, like a little thing that dis um, tries to display um, the uh, uh, image files and try to recognize them. So I made this myself, um, but that's there's nothing special about that. So you can just ignore this one, but this just shows you how the MNIST image files look like and what number they should be. Um, and the sixth class that um, I made myself is uh, the main or the MNIST um, class. There are three methods in it. I already programmed them, so I talked about pro programming it with you, but there's like, there's not a lot of algorithm happening or anything. It's just like a lot of um, stupid or straightforward things, um, especially for our four new classes. So um, yeah, I've got four, um, I got three methods. The first one is uh, the one that creates a train set out of our um, loaded file. So what it does, it um, creates a new train set. The input size is 28 times 28 uh, because our images um, have this dimension. So 28 pixels, pixels by 28 pixels. And the output size is equal to 10. Uh, you may ask why we are using 10, not only one output. The answer for this is that um, each digit will get one output and not just one output for all of our digits. So uh, if we have like, uh, 0 0.9 in our th third output, we know that it should be the number 3 or 2 when you, when you start counting with the 0. Um, then what I'm doing is I'm um, accessing or just loading the files. Uh, then I go from our start index to our end index. So uh, I'm c I can select which images I want to select from our file. Um, then I'm doing just some printing stuff that displays how many uh, images we already loaded. Uh, then I'm creating a new input and a new output array. And the um, 
output and our l.read label. That means there's a label file and our image file. The image files are the uh, the image file is the uh, that contains the images. The label file contains uh, the information which number we're currently working with in our image. So um, the expected output that we want for our current input is uh, the current label that we are working with. So we want um, the for example, if we if we got a, we, if we got an image, and it should be a one, for example. So uh, our elder relabel tells us it should be a one, and we are trying. Uh, then we are going to set the output of index one to one. So our expected output would be zero, one, zero, and so on. Um, the next thing I will do is I'm going to set the uh, input array. So I'm just running through. Um, our input array 28, 28 times 28 and I'm reading the uh, data out of our image file in this case and I'm dividing it by 256. This one is not necessary but um, they're given in RGB values. Uh, no, they're not. Uh, they're in, given in values between 0 and 256 but we only want numbers between 0 and 1 because that's easier for our network to learn. Um, and after that I'm going to add the data to our set. Uh, then I'm just um, going for m.next and l.next. This just means that we're jumping to the next image and the next label file. Um, this all has to be done in a try and catch uh, thing because uh, the loading stuff and so on, it can throw errors. Uh, after that I'm just going to return the set and that's it for this method. The second one trains our data and um, this is very easy. So. Um, I got. I'm giving the network that we're currently training with. Um, I, I'm giving the train set. I'm giving um, the epochs that we are uh, that we want to learn, and we're giving. Uh, I'm gi giving the loops. So you may ask now, why am I giving both of them? And the answer is qu quite simple. We could increase the epochs, and we um, later in the next video I'll show you how to save our network, so we can um, run our uh, our network like uh, this. Um, we can run the training process like. 100,000 times and after 10 times we can say okay that's enough um, I can just interrupt the program and it has saved uh, our program each epoch but not for each loop um, and I also got the batch size and let's um, call um, calls the uh, network train with the set the loop and the batch size uh, and for each epoch I will um, print the current epoch that we are in um, the last method trains uh, tests our train set and it will display how good or bad our network learned the data. So um, I'm counting how many correct values we counted. Um, I'm giving the network, I'm giving the train set and I'm um, giving a value that says um, print steps. It just displays um, how often it displays how good or bad our uh, training was. You will see with what I mean with that. So. Um, in our for loop, it runs our train set, and um, I'm getting the highest value of our output um, array. So uh, what I do is I'm feeding our data forward, so net.calculate of set.getInput of i, and then I got the network tools method, index of highest value, and this returns which value in our array, uh, or the I'm returning the index of the highest value in our array. Um, I think that's pretty simple um, and I'm pre um, so pretty much our network is telling us that what it calculated should be uh, the highest value uh, so no um, the index that it returns is um, what the network thinks the 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 matching number for image but the actual high uh, the actual number that it should be is um, the set dot get output so the expected output or the highest value of the actual output um, and if these both values are equal so um, pretty much if the the uh, output of our array is equal to the um, to the expected output then uh, the correct guesses will increase by one and then I'm just going uh, I'm checking if I um, then I got this uh, percent sign and this just means if uh, i is dividable by this number, so in full numbers um, I'm going to print 
the correct um, the correct amount of data divided by i plus one. I'm using i plus one because we are setting an i equals to z uh, equals zero. So when we are running the first test, we are at i equals zero. Um, and after that, I'm printing uh, testing finished result, and I'm dividing the cor correct amount of um, specified data divided by the um, set size. And um, if I run this, or uh, I'm going to make the main method with you together. So what we have to do is the first thing, of course, is creating our network. Um, and I'm going for a network with 784 input um, neurons. That's um, 28 times 28. Then I'm going for 70 in the first in layer, 35 in the second in layer, and 10 in the output layer. Um, this is kind of small. I've seen networks that have way more neurons. For example, the um, neural nets and the six layer. Um, so there's one with 784, 2500 and so on. And it got 0 0.35. Uh, that's okay, but we only have 0 0.7 later on with like only four layers. That's really good. Um, then we are going to create the train set for training our data. So train set set is create train set. And I'm going, I'm not going to use all the data for now. I'm going, I'm just going to use um, like 5,000, the first 5,000 5, images. Um, then I'm going to test the, tr um, the test, um, I'm going to train the data first, so network, and I need our train set. Uh, I'm going for like one, I'm, I'm going for, yeah, 100, why not? Um, oh no, that's too much, I think. Uh, let me stick to 10. Um, I'm going for 50 loops and a batch size of maybe 100. Um, the next thing is we want to test how good our network trained the data. And for this, I'm going to make a new train set, um, test set. Um, it's create train set, but we are going to uh, use the second, um, the second 5,000 numbers. So uh, until 9999. And then I'm going to test the train set. And it needs the network, it needs um, the test set, test set, and it needs to know the print steps. And I'm just sticking to 10. And I'm not sure how long the training step will take, but let's hope that it doesn't take too long. And if I run this, this should hopefully work. So it's the first thing is preparing the train set, then it's running the data, and you see this number, this is the mean squared error. And usually when you start your network, you have uh, things like, I don't know, one. And um, you can see that um, the sometimes we got things like e uh, to the negative four. It's like 10 to the negative four. That's really small. We got like 0, 0.00 and um, so on. That's actually quite good. But um, it's still quite too high for making um, the network learn the data uh, very good. So our success rate is only at um, 97 or 96 percent. Um, yeah, we are at 96.9 percent. Um, oh, I, ma I made that wrong. It's not zero point, just 96.9 um, percent. Um, this is okay. It's like uh, if I would um, have the training thing um, do longer, this would probably be much better. So um, I'm running it again. And you can also increase the amount of data that you're learning. Uh, this will also increase the um, classification success for your network. And um, so it does print the uh, epoch that we're currently in. And these are the uh, loops. So for each loop, it prints current batch mean squared error. And we are at um, 35. Um, I'm going. To, yeah, I'm just. I'm just waiting. Um, meanwhile, I'm going to explain something else to you. So, um, this is working now. We, we've got no mean squared error that is really small. Um, but sometimes it might happen that it sticks to like 0 0.4. I think that's, um, it most often sticks to 0 0.4 and doesn't get, it doesn't get lower and lower. And, um, like I, I, when I made this video, I was stuck at that point for like half a day and I didn't know what, what happened. And this, it's the following. So, um, I changed the lower bound and the upper bound of our bias and of our weights. 
Um, and the reason for that is the following. Um, I told you that um, when we do the um, when we apply the back regression algorithm, it we're finding e with respect to the weight, and so we can reduce our uh, weight to or increase our weight to reduce our error. But this would work if our function of our error would look something like this, but it sadly doesn't. So when we have, when we have more weights, it uh, more likely looks something like this. And um, for example, just imagine our weight is in between 0 and 0 0.5. No matter where we are going to put our um, point or our weight in 0, 0 to 0 0.5, it will always find the lowest point and this is somewhere here. But the error is still quite high. So the lowest point that we could possibly reach would be this one. But we can't reach that one because the gradient always tells us to go down the hill. So just imagine a ball. Um, pretty much the backpropagation algorithm uh, uses some kind of a ball to go downhill. So we are going downhill and we are stopping here. But what do you want is we want to go down here. So um, if you ever come to the point that your error stacks at like a really high error, just change your weights, your initial weights, and the problem might fix itself. Um, otherwise, you you did um, you did a prob uh, you did a mistake with your network or something like that. But um, this is just like a huge problem that uh, I start across. And so we did the um, learning process, and um, our result is 99.3 of 0.28. So um, this is like a really good result. And we could um, increase the training steps and so on. But um, I think I'm quite happy with this. And yeah, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to save your network to use it later on again to, um, so you don't have to do the training step over and over again.